So this morning, we will be focusing on the profit and loss appropriation account of, par of a partnership. However, before we delve in our lesson students, let us outline the objectives. What is it that we intend to achieve for today? At the end of the lesson, students should be able to state clearly what is a partnership. Explain correctly what is a partnership deed. Outline clearly the purpose of a partnership's profit and loss appropriation account. And students should be able to draw up clearly a partnership's profit and loss appropriation account. Now students, what is a partnership? Think of the root word partner. Yes, your partner in crime, someone who is with you, someone who works with you. Therefore, a partnership is a type of business that is owned by two to 20 individuals. Two being the minimum, while 20 being the maximum. Of course, there are some exception to these rules. Now, owners of a partnership are known as partners. Students, there are different types of partners. We have on board three examples. One, ordinary, or what we refer to as general or working partner. We also have sleeping or limited partner, and we have secret partners. Now, the working partner is the one who invests in the business and is active every day in the business. The sleeping partner, on the other hand, thinks sleep. He has invested, but he's inactive in the operation of the business on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we have secret partners. This type of partner has invested in the business, but it's a secret to the public that this partner is a part of the entity. Now, before partners go into a partnership, it spells wisdom for them to sit and come to some agreement. Hence, the Partnership Act of 1890 dictates that persons who are going to enter into a partnership must draft up what we call a partnership deed or a partnership agreement. So what is a partnership deed? A partnership deed is also known as a partnership agreement. Now, some agreement made by partners, students, are as follows. One, interest on capital to be received by the partners. Now, you've invested in a business. You put your money in, it, in a business. You want to know how much, how much interest you're going to get on your capital. Two, interest on drawings. Now, guess what happened now, students? Sometimes the owner is permitted to take out of the business items for his or her personal use. Let's say we take, a partner decides to take out cash out of the business. This partner, in paying back the business, it may have been agreed upon that the partner must pay back what he or she has borrowed, plus some interest. Then, there are bonuses that may be agreed upon. What is bonus? Yes, extra money, added money to your regular salary or your regular pay. Most times at Christmas, you find that businesses tend to pay out bonuses, especially if you've performed very well. Now, very important, the profit and loss sharing ratio. No, it spells sense. We agree because you may have invested more than I have. And it may be a case wherein we might want to split 50-50. Who to tell? So we have to agree on the profit and loss sharing ratio. Now the act says if there is no agreement where this is concerned, then we must share equally. Then there is also agreement where arrangements for dissolution of, part of the partnership is concerned. So if the partnership has to be terminated or has to come to an end, we're going to sit and we're going to decide how we're going to dissolve, 
How will the assets be um, shared, etc., etc.? Partner, not you alone in this one. You're not a sole trader. We are partners, so there must be some form of agreement. Then, what happens to if there's a death of a partner or a admission of a new partner? Now, these are some agreements that can be made in a partnership deed. Now, I have a trivia for you. Guess what? I want you to tell me, based on what I have just outlined to you, what is the upper limit for the number of partners in a general partnership? Answer to come. Now we have here a work exercise. Grab your pen, grab your papers, grab your calculators. Remember now, school's not out and I need you to work with me actively. You're my partner in this. Here on the board, we have a work exercise that we're going to nicely glide through to cement certain principles. All right. Now, the exercise is based on two partners, Ying and Yang. Now, they are in partnership, sharing profit and losses in the ratio of two to three, respectively ratio do not kill me i'm not here to teach math but don't worry you'll understand how to do the ratio part of it if you don't by the end of this lesson i guarantee you now the partners have made a net profit of thirty thousand dollars the partners have also agreed to the following per annum per annum students mean yearly this is important because when you are doing the question the agreement could be based on a half year basis it could be made on a monthly basis so it is important that you note the terms of agreement now here are the agreements for yin and yang one they've both agreed that there should be an interest on capital of 10% They've also agreed that there should be interest on drawings of 5%. Yang is to be paid a salary of $2,000. Ying and Yang are to receive a bonus of $3,000 each. Now note briefly that drawings made by Ying was $10,000. So Ying took out of the business approximately $10,000 for his personal use. No. The partners have agreed that in paying back this, there should be an interest of 5%. All right? So Ying won't only pay back the $10,000, but he will also pay an additional 5% as interest. Before we look at the profit and loss appropriation account itself, let's do some workings based on the agreement. Now, how would we calculate our interest on drawings? Students, Ying's drawings was $5,000. He's to pay to the partnership a 10% interest on drawings. How do you calculate the interest on drawings? It's 10%. Percent means out of, I hear you, 100. So it's 10 divided by 100 times, times $5,000. The answer, $500. It therefore means that Ying's interest on drawings will be $500. Is that clear? Good. So that's our first calculation. Let's look at our second calculation. How would we calculate then the interest on capital? Remember, we're doing all these calculations to plug them in the profit and loss appropriation account for the partners, okay? Now, Ying's capital was $60,000. The agreement, and I've also placed it on the board for you to remember, the agreement is that there should also be an interest on capital of 10%. So every year, the partners are to be paid a 10% interest on their capital. How would you work that out? Similarly 
to that of the interest on drawings. So you will say 10% of $60,000 and this will be $6,000. Yang's capital is $40,000. His interest is also 10%. How will we work this out? Take 10% of the 40,000 students, so it's 10 divided by 100 times $40,000. So Yang's interest then is going to be $4,000. Hope you're with me. Now, I like to introduce the profit and loss account for the partners using the horizontal style because it makes it nice and easy for persons to understand the whole aspect of the increasing side and the decreasing side. I've noted that over the years. So therefore, I'm now going to plug in all that we have just done a while ago using the horizontal style of the profit and loss appropriation account. Let's go. But at the end, I'll show you what it would look like with the vertical style. Now, here we are with the profit and loss appropriation account for yin and yang. There's a debit side and there's a credit side. It is standard, student, it doesn't change. The debit side of the account is the left side. The credit side is the right side. However, for the appropriation account, students, the credit side is the increasing side. The credit side is the increasing side, while the debit side is the decreasing side. All the profits, or the net profit, I should say, along with the interest that Yang will be paying back will be entered on the credit side. So all the money that we have to share will be entered on the credit side. Now, what will be taken out of that for the partners will be entered on the debit side. If you notice, the debit side, I have a minus sign here to show that it is decreasing the amount of profits for the, biz, for the partners or the partnership, while the credit side represent the profits, that which has increased over a period of time and which we intend to pay out of to our partners. Now, let's move on. On the credit side of the appropriation account for the partners, students, only two items are permitted to be on this side. The first item is what we call the net profit BD. It's a BD because it is being brought down from the profit and loss account. You would remember that when you were doing it for a sole trader, you never had to share up anything because a John one alone did invest in and business. No, you have yin and yang, so they have to share it up. This, in my case, the net profit BD is $30,000. That's the first item that is allowed to go on the credit side of the appropriation account. The second item that is allowed is what we call the interest on drawings. In our case, the interest on drawings will be paid to the partnership by Ying 5%. We had worked that out already and we got $500. Now students, it therefore means that here we have in our business, our net profit, as well as our interest on drawings, all of this money to be shared between our partners, Ying and Yang. Okay? Now, let me go again. We have all our profits here, the net profit BD, plus the interest on drawings that Ying has paid back. And we're going to share it up now between the partners, Ying and Yang. All right. So when we add the $30,000 to the $500, we're going to get a total of $30,500. Me count it already. Trust me. That's, that's the amount that we have. Now, the first 
item that will be taken out of this $30,500 student is the interest on capital. 10% will be given to Ying. We had worked that out already too. So we're plugging it in. So we're going to give Ying his $6,000. Imagine me count it already. Well, me tell us I did. Trust me. All right. So therefore, it can't be $30,500 again that is in here because we have taken out of the $30,500 the $6,000 for Ying. We're also going to take out Yang's interest on capital. Yang's interest on capital is $4,000. We're giving it to Yang. How much so far has come out of the net profit and the interest on drawings total? $10,000. Good. It's there on the board. We also have salary to be paid out to Yang. So we're going to take out $2,000 and we're going to give it to Yang. All right? Good. Another agreement that was made, student, is basically to pay Ying bonus as well as Yang bonus of $3,000. So we're going to give them their money each. All right? Imagine. The total for bonus would be $6,000. So we've taken out interest on capital. We've also taken out the salary. And we've also taken out the bonus. What did we take it out of? The net profit student plus the interest on drawings. The profits that the business now have remaining to distribute, to allocate, to appropriate amongst the partners. All right. Now, let's ask ourselves this question. We're going to go back. If we have taken out $10,000 as interest on capital for Ying, and for Yang, and we've also taken out salary for Yang of $2,000, and we've taken out bonuses for Ying and Yang of $3,000 each, out of $30,500. Can we still have $30,500 left? No. What would we have remaining, or how much money would we have remaining? Students, the monies came out, added up to be a total of $18,000. Let's go. $10,000 plus $2,000 gives us $12,000 plus the bonuses of $6,000. When you add the $12,000 with the $6,000, you get $18,000. The $18,000 the $18,000 came out of the net profit along with the interest on drawings. So if we have taken out money out of the interest on drawings and have given it to Ying and Yang respectively, we cannot still have the $30,500. How much would we have remaining? We would have $12,500 $12, remaining. Now students, Ying alone can go home with this. 12,500. Neither can Yang alone go home with the $12,500. The $12,500 again will have to be shared amongst the partners. And this is where the profit and loss ratio comes into place. So how do we share this remaining profit of 12,500? I just told you we will use the profit sharing ratio. Students, please note that the partnership doesn't always make a profit. If I even losses, then I'm going to have to share it according to the profit and loss sharing ratio. In this case, Ying and Yang had a profit sharing ratio 
of two to three respectively. Of two to three respectively. Now I'm not a math teacher students, I don't claim to be, but I'm gonna see how well I can help some of you who always struggle with the ratio issue. When you see the ratio expressed like this, don't become daunted. The first thing you have to do is simply to add the figures. Step one. So it was two to three. So you're going to say two plus three, which will give you five. Now, ratios in and of themselves are fractions. When you add the two and the three, you get five here. The five will represent the denominator for the fractions. Step two. Ying's share of the profit will be two-fifth. How did I get that? Now, when you see the ratio expressed as two to three respectively, you simply, the word respectively, simply means in the order as the names are called. So it's yin and yang. So the two will go for yin and the three will go for yang. All right? Now, when you add the two plus the three, you get five. The five is going to be the denominator, while the two will represent the numerator for yin, and the three will represent the numerator for yang. So yin's share of profit is going to be two-fifth of the remaining profit of 12,500, which works out to be $5,000. And Yang's share of remaining profit is going to be three-fifths of the $12,500, which will work out to be $7,500. Now, students, listen to me. They can tell you to share the remaining profit according to the capital that the partners have invested. All you simply do is follow the same ratio principle. So let's say that Yang had invested $60,000 and Ying had invested $40,000. Then you simply would do this. You would say, oops, sorry. You would say 60000 to 40000 that is if we were sharing according to capital. According to capital. So it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, students, how the ratio is expressed. You must know that basically you apply the ratio principle. All right? So in this case, we would simply say $60,000 plus $40,000, and it would give us the denominator of $100,000. So one partner would get $60,000 over $100,000, while the other partner would get $40,000 over $100,000. Just like in our example here, where one partner is going to get two-fifths and the other partner is going to get three-fifths. Again, how did we come to the five? We said two plus three equal five, which will give us the denominator while the, top, while the ratio figures themselves would represent the numerator. I hope you're understanding. Now, we are now going to enter the share of the remaining profit in the profit and loss appropriation account. Ying's share of remaining profit was actually $5,000. Let's go back to our calculation so that you can refresh yourself. Ying's share of remaining profit, two-fifth of 12,500, gives us $5,000. Bear in mind, 
Yang's share, which is 7,500, because we won't come back to this. Now, so the share of remaining profit for Ying was two-fifths. This worked out to be $5,000. And the share of remaining profit for Yang was three-fifths, which worked out to be 7,500. When you add the 5,000 and the 7,500 children, you're going to get your 12,500. Because at the same remaining profit, you've just shared between the two partners using their profit sharing ratio. Again, remember, please remember that the profit sharing ratio or the profit and loss sharing ratio is applied when you're going to share the remaining profit. Now, let's see how, we would, how this would look in the horizontal style, a full view of it. On the debit side, there are the allotments for the partners. Everything where the partner then must get out of the interest on drawings and the net profit BD. In our case, what were there, the allotments for the partners were interest on capital for Ying, 10%, interest on capital for Yang, 10%. There was salary also for Yang of $2,000. And you know what type of partner could Yang be while we're giving him a salary? Remember, we looked at the type of partners, the active one. Ah, tell me, what type of partner could he be? A general partner, right, or a working partner, an active partner. So we might decide to pay him. So Yang would receive salary of $2,000. Bonuses were given to Ying and Yang of $3,000 each. And there was a sh remaining profit of $12,500. This student, we shared according to what? Yeah, the profit sharing ratio, which worked out to be two fifth, three fifth. So on the debit side of the appropriation account, we have all the items that should be paid out to the partners. On the credit side, students, we have only two items. And remember, at all times, only two items can go on the credit side of an appropriation account for a partner. These items are the net profit BD and the interest on drawings. This total is the amount of money, the amount of profits that the business has to share up to allot to the partners. So what is on the debit side is coming out of the total that is on the credit side. All right, so we're moving on. How would this look vertically? So I introduced you to the horizontal style. Let's see how it would look vertically. I love to tell my students that having learned the horizontal style, the items that are usually written on the deb the credit side of the horizontal style, you write them first for the vertical style. The items that are usually written on the credit side of the profit and loss appropriation account, you write them first when you're doing it vertically. CXE likes the vertical style, but I like to do the transfer so that my students can see clearly because any game can play, right? Now, the two items that were on the credit side of the appropriation account were the net profit BD, yes, you're correct, and the interest on drawings. Because remember, under them two day alone, can't go up on the credit side of the appropriation account. So you write them first. So here we have on the board, the net profit BD, interest on drawings. We total them students and we get a total of 30,500. 
What this is simply saying is that the partnership has a total of $30,500 to appropriate, to allot, to share up, to divide, to share amongst partners or between partners. Now we normally use the word between if it's two partners and we use amongst if it's more than two. So we have 30,500 to share. So look at this now. This from this 30,500, we're going to take out all the items that we need to allot to our partners. So we're going to less interest on capital. Yes, for Ying, 10%. For Yang, 10%, which, which works out to be 6,000 and 4,000 respectively. Remember, we did all of that working, right? We have a total of $10,000. Bonuses came out also out of the 30,500. And for Ying and Yang, it was $3,000 respectively. Then there was salary for Yang of $2,000. We said probably it's because Yang is an active partner, right? He's probably doing most of the work, so we decided to give him a salary. Now, when we tallied all of the items, the interest on drawings, the bonus, and the salary, it came up to be $12,000. We then subtracted the $12,000 from the $30,500, just like in our case here, when we kept taking out the money and giving it to the different partners. So all that is left here was a $12,500. Good. Now that $12,500 has to be shared up amongst the partners. Remember, it's not a sole trader, so one man alone cannot go home with it. Everything has to be shared. Good. We share that remaining $12,500 according to the profit and loss sharing ratio. So here it is, two-fifth, three-fifth. Work it out. Yang, 5,000. Ying, 7,500. Good. Now when you tally all, your, all that you have taken out, all the allotments, it comes back to the $30,500. So this is the vertical presentation. Remember again, when you're doing the vertical style students, those items that are generally, generally written on the credit side of the horizontal style, you write them first and then you take out the allotments. I hope you are learning, but most importantly, I hope you are writing. School's not out. Do not forget that. Now let's move on. Let me see how much you have been learning. Let's see. Another name for a partnership deed is A, Partnership Act, B, Partnership Law, C, Partners Appropriation, D, Partnership Agreement, I don't know. Now there is a third trivia. Peter and Paul are in partnership, sharing profits and losses in the ratio of two to four, respectively. The profit to be shared between the two partners is $60,000. How much is Paul's share? Is it A, $10,000? Is it B, $30,000? Is it C, $40,000? Or is it D, $70,000? Me teach you. Work it. I hope you're getting it right. Now, the key points emanating, I'll go back to that slide after I've done the trivia, but I want to make sure first that you have your pen and your paper in your hand or your notebook because school's not out. Now, what? let's seek now the answers to the trivia. What is the upper limit for the number of partners in a general partnership? Upper. Did you say 20? 
you are correct. Yes, because it's two to 20 partners for the general. Remember now, there are exceptions to the rules, so you can research. So the answer is 20. If you said two, you're wrong. Two is the law. The next one is, what's another name for a partnership deed? The answer is partnership agreement. Now remember, it's the Partnership Act of 1890 that actually dictates that partners must have a partnership deed or a partnership agreement. You may read too that another name for deed or agreement is pact. I think it's Mara Carey who sings a song which says, you and I must make a pact. Yeah, an agreement, okay? So if you hear pact, deed or agreement is the same. All right. Now, look at this one. Peter and Paul are in partnership, sharing profits and losses in the ratio of two to four respectively. The profit is to be shared between the two part. The profit to be shared between the two partners is sixty thousand dollars. How much is Paul's share? Now, students, what's the first thing I should do? I should do what? Okay, I'm trying to follow you. I'm gonna go to the board. Are you saying, students, that the first thing I should do is to add the figures that have been expressed in ratio form? Two to four, respectively? Okay, sounds correct. All right, so this six then is going to represent my denominator, good. And who are the partners? Peter and Paul, all right. So the two would be, then be for Peter, while the four would be for Paul. All right, so which one of the partners' share of profit are they interested in? Paul's share. Now, in my case, Paul would be getting four-sixth of the $60,000. Let's work that out for Paul. So four-sixth of the $60,000 for Paul would basically work out to be what, students? You have your calculator. You can do your stuff. I have confidence in you. All right? So therefore, two-third of it is going to work out to be what? If we're correct, $40,000. Is that our answer? Ooh, boom. If you got that, you're on, the, you're on a roll. All right. Now, let's go back to our key points for today. Don't forget, students, that the increasing side of the profit and loss appropriation account for our partners is the credit side, while the decreasing side is the debit side. Only two items only two items are entered on the credit side of the partner's profit and loss appropriation account also remember if there's no profit and loss sharing ratio which have been agreed on share the profit and the losses equally now that's all today for csec accounts partnership profit and loss appropriation accounts we hope you have grasped some of the points, but preferably most of the points which we have discussed.